To continue with our fantasy creature composite, just reviewing the steps so far, we made an inspiration sketch inspired by certain things because everything that's imagined has to come from real world combinations. Even if it was like an energy beast combined with a flower, that's where our visual vocabulary comes from. Then we took our different references. We wanted references that were bare minimum a thousand pixels, but larger if possible. And we rough cut those together. We assembled a head out of its various components, kind of like the engine of a car. So you can see all of these layer up to make this head. If there's any component that's not needed, then you can get rid of it at this point. And I was a little shocked that by the end, I really liked mine, but it just looks like the head of a dog, you know. But it's my dog. It's my creation. No one can copyright that dog head. I've transformed the reference. Now we're finding some transition pieces. So I'm using this big um, plant that I warped a little bit. I'll play with it some more. Definitely play with the color. Then I have the body. Now that plant's covering a lot of that transition of the body. I probably don't need, need it to cover so much. And the body itself is made up of several components. Some of which I can get rid of. Like this leg here. It's good to kind of be aware of what your layers are doing because I don't need this portion in here anymore. And I can delete it from this layer. That will help cleaning up later. Because I have the leg floating on top there. And then if I want to work on the internal edges, which is what I need to do a lot today, I'm going to start using my 100% eraser, but not so hard edged. Instead, very soft edged. And with 100%, I'm going to get rid of those hard edges internally. in order to blend this in a little bit better. Same thing with the tail and the back of the dog or the back of my beast here. You can use that soft edge at 100% to get rid of all that little green that green halo from the source material. And right now the colors are not matching great, but I get to work on that. Now, when it comes to the outside edge, like this stuff, I'm not going to worry about that until everything is color corrected and together. And it's like bolting parts of a car together and then using kind of welding solder to, to seam the pieces. And then once everything is together and working, maybe you've done a test drive of it, then you, you start sanding it down and polishing it. And that's what cleaning up the outside edge will be. But that will be once we have all the internal edges and colors resolved. Because otherwise you're just going to be working between multiple layers. And often that's not going to be necessary. So for instance, I, I first want to resolve the edges here. You know, the little bits of green that are staying here on this layer before I get into how it looks on the other layers. And mostly I'm just worried about the overlaps. Once you get rid of those hard edges, then you can go in with lower opacities and start blending. And instead of making everything the exact same color and tonality, we want to kind of go with the color variations of a fantasy creature. We're also going to learn some fun tools like Clone Stamp today, where we can extend some of these colors and textures to other parts of the, of the piece.
but always starting at 100% opacity first to get rid of hard edges. All right. So I generally work from the background forward. So looking at the body and looking at my furthest back layer, I see this tail. I also add a step here that I don't usually do for landscapes. And I'm going to put in a blank background layer. I'm going to do that with a little plus sign at the bottom of the layer window. It looks like a post-it. And with this, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger on the screen. With that new layer, I'm going to say edit fill. We'll be doing a lot of this later on. With 50% gray. Now by doing that, it's going to show me these little spots that sometimes get left. I only have one layer open, but already that one layer has a lot of little debris from where I erased it out. Kind of free floating. When you do it on 50% gray, it's going to show you the things that are darker than white and the things that are um, lighter than 50% gray. So darker than 50% gray and lighter than 50% gray. What you can also do is make another background layer and then say edit fill with white. And this is how you test any free floating illustration or digital art piece. It should look good on white. It should look good on middle gray. And if you wanted to, you can even make another duplicate and say edit fill and fill it with black. So now we have the three different backgrounds that our creature needs to look good on in order to be finished. And that will really help us refine the edges. But middle gray is the one I'll work on the most. Now, I've gotten rid of any extraneous uh, background noise around this. I'm not going to cut out the outside yet. Instead, I'm going to turn on the layer on top of it. I'll go ahead and lock these different backgrounds, the white, the black, and the gray, and just turn them off and on as needed. But now I want to start working on the colors and the lighting with direct adjustment and with dodge and burn. So I'm going to take this tail. Actually, no, I'm going to take the wolf body, and I'm going to play with first levels and decide do I want it using the mid-tone slider to be brighter or darker. I think I want it to be just a little bit brighter. Do I want to limit the highlights a little? Maybe just a touch. And again, you can always check in your history if you like the changes that made, if it helps blend it in with that tail a little bit better. Then I can go to the tail, I can do the same thing. Go to image adjustment levels, play with the mid-tone slider, Maybe I want that tail to be a little bit darker because it's more in the background and maybe limit the highlights just a touch. Okay, now color temperature. I'm going to go to the wolf's body. I'm going to go to image adjustments, color balance. And here I can do a lot to kind of play up the reds and the oranges in the body, but I don't want to do it so much that I lose variation, right? So I can make it match that tail this way but I don't want to lose kind of the yellows and the browns that are in there. So instead I'm going to shift it, but just moderately. And then that's in the midtones. Maybe in the shadows, I push it a little bit towards the blues. Just slightly. And in the highlights, I can push it back towards the warms. All right, so now I've got that kind of color that's a little too much yellow for my taste. There we go. But I'm not losing all that variety. So it was like this, and now it's like this. And that helps bring them together, which will make kind of transitioning between them, especially on the back, a lot more believable. Next, I have this leg. Got to do the same things to that leg. But because I want it to maybe push back, I might change its levels a little bit. 
So if I'm going to darken its levels, limit its highlights so it looks a little bit more like it's in shadow. And then I got to go to color balance. You can see all the green that's in it from the reflected light around that reference. I'm going to push the reds into it instead. And the highlights and then counteract that in my shadows just a bit. And then I can also play with the hue saturation on that back leg and maybe just dim the the color overall a little bit by taking the saturation down. I can also command T at this point and just because I'm re I'm placing the leg somewhere different just tug it slightly differently than the other foot. Kind of place it where I want it. This is not a copy and paste of the other leg, but it is moving the leg from another place in the reference, some internal compositing. And now that I've got those colors where I want them, now I can go in with my eraser. I've got some overlap there for the belly. And once I've done 100%, I can now move, and with a soft edge, now I can move to lower opacities and just kind of lightly blending it in a little bit so that that leg feels naturally coming from behind this fur. And sometimes I'll take the opacity down even to just like 15 or so. Okay, I'm not going to worry about cutting it out here, but I can transition these inside edges. All right. I'm going to save that. Now, how do I make this back look believable and this tail look believable? I can see that on the back of the wolf, there's this debris here. You can see it on the gray pretty clearly. So I guess take my lasso, do a pretty hard cut, get rid of that with delete. Make sure there's no kind of floating pixels out there. All right, next, and I hit Command D to deselect. Now I want to blend it in with this tail. And there's a few tricks I can use. One is I can add a new layer. I'm going to mark that layer red. And this is a tool called Clone Stamp which is easy to overuse, but it's a very helpful tool in compositing. So I mark it red because clone stamps are kind of a dangerous thing to use. And they're especially dangerous if you use them on the layer that you're replacing. So instead you want to do a, a, dupe, a, a new blank layer on top, mark it red, and then I always label it in capitals. Because in my experience, if you label it and you use the clone stamp separate from anything else, you can use it for a lot of good things. So the clone stamp tool, I'm going to make this full screen because this is new and a little tricky. It is underneath the brush tool. So it looks like a stamp. And I'll just let it play its little version. It paints with pixels from another part of the image. But where you select and target where you want it to paint from is going to move with you. So you're often having to target and then retarget and then retarget. So let's click that. You don't want the one in, inside the drawer. You just want the good old fashioned clone stamp tool. Then you want to look at the tools at the top or the settings at the top for the tool. You want it on normal mode. You want it on an opacity that's 100% first. It's a lot like using our eraser. And you want it with a very soft brush. So I'm going to make it fairly large just so you can see it clearly. 